real quick before we start the video here. I just want to let you know that I'm going to men be mentioning a video, a replay of a live TikTok stream that I did. That video, if you want to watch it, is available in the members only section. So if you join the membership, choose the loyalist contributor tier, uh, join that, and then you will have access to that particular TikTok live stream that I mentioned and a plethora of other members only videos only available to members, not available to the public. Thank you. Just wanted to make that clear. The video that I mentioned, the TikTok live stream that I recently did, is available in the members only section. Thank you. Hello, friends and neighbors. This video is going to be a syntax lesson, a very brief syntax lesson, but it's also going to double as a stop and correct. With all humility, I come to you. Uh, there, I recently published a TikTok live stream where I syntaxed uh, a paragraph and during the syntaxing of that paragraph I made one mistake and the mistake was not how can you say it conscious it was more like what, what the kids would call a brain fart all right the word that came out of my mouth and the number that I put as a syntax value was not what I would knowingly put on a paper because it is not part of the five syntax scenarios. And I'm showing you right now on your screen the sentence where the mistake is. And as a viewer of my channel, if you study correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I would like you to point out where the mistake is in the syntax. Because as it stands, the sentence is, we the people of the United States, and the syntax values are 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 3.8, and 4. Can you find the mistake? I'm going to go through it and syntax it with 100% completeness, because when your position when you're in a position like mine, when you're in the public, you put your face and uh, your reputation basically up on the screen in the public next to your work, you're held accountable for it. And I certainly was. And uh, I give credit to one of my students who sent me an email and pointed out, hey, I would have syntaxed it this way. And then I looked at it and then they said, and then they gave the timestamp and they said, you syntaxed it this way. And you said this. And then they quoted what I said. And I was like, that doesn't sound right. So then I went to the, the video and I watched it. And sure enough, those words came out of my mouth. That it's a, you know, this type of syntax scenario when it clearly is not and is not correct and would not be correct under the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. So it was sort of, uh, you know, just a mistake. To err is human. Everyone makes mistakes. Uh, the difference between, I think, the difference between myself and those other people out there that claim to be some sort of authority of this grammar or have some sort of mastery over this grammar or claim to have knowledge of the grammar, the difference between myself and them is I'm not afraid to come out and admit my mistakes. And this is one of those times. So go ahead, take your time, figure out which, uh, wh where the mistake is, you think. And uh, right now, I'm going to get into syntaxing it, also parsing it, performing forensics on this sentence. If you've watched uh, my syntax playlist, or if you've taken workshops with me, or seen some of my many classes, you will know that the way I teach syntax to beginners is I tell them to start at the end of the sentence and work backwards. It is the most efficient and effective way to syntax. Because if you're a beginner or even an intermediate or even advanced, if you start at the beginning and go left to right, you most certainly will run into a scenario where you banked syntax values and then you realize, oh, that's not right. And then you've got to backtrack a little bit and fix it, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you go backwards 
that doesn't happen. When you go backwards, it's 100% accurate if you know what you're doing. So the first step, and again, if you hear words that coming out of my mouth that you don't, you're not sure what they mean, I urge you to study the syntax playlist on my channel, the parse playlist on my channel, the correct sentence structure playlist on my channel, the mini class playlist on my channel, where you can get closure to all of those terms that you hear me say. So the first thing that you would do is to credential the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word, whether it's based on a fact or not based on a fact. And you would do that going backwards. So states, I have a tangible contract with states that is based on a fact. It's not a fact because it has not been positioned as a fact, but it is based on a fact. United, yes, that's tangible, based on a fact. The, the is what we call non-tangible. It's not based on a fact. It doesn't have the same, we don't have the same contract with the word the, the same tangible contract with the word the as we do with the word states or with the word united. Same thing goes with of, it's non-tangible. People, we do have a tangible contract with what a people is or are. The, again, non-tangible, and then we is non-tangible. So, when you're looking at these things, when you see a tangible contract word like states or united or people, right off the bat through process of elimination, you know that those tangible contract words, people, united, and states, you know that they're not going to be adverbs. Okay, you know that for sure. You know that they're either going to be Verbs, adjectives, or pronouns, all right? And then we look at the words, the non-tangible words, of, the, and we, the. We know that they're for sure not going to be adjectives because non-tangible contract words will never be adjectives. They're going to be either adverbs, verbs, or pronouns. We see the word states. It's tangible contract. We know it's not going to be an adverb. Why? Because we know that tangible contract words can only be verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. Also, it comes at the end of the word group or sentence, so therefore, it would only be a verb or a pronoun. So now we've narrowed it down even further. It's either going to be a verb or a pronoun. And verbs and pronouns can be either tangible or non-tangible, unlike adjectives, which can only be tangible, or adverbs, which can only be non-tangible. So now we look at what precedes it. United. United is tangible also. So now we have two tangible contract words in a row. We know for sure, we know for sure that that's going to be an adjective pronoun scenario. That's going to be a 3-4 scenario. And then it's preceded by a non-tangible contract word, which is the which would be an adverb because we know if we have a syntax master key that adverbs modify either verbs or adjectives. And we also know the five syntax scenarios. Adverb, verb, pronoun, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, adjective pronoun those are the five syntax scenarios and there's one of them one three four i would also do to point out the particles of negation in these words do a little bit of parse forensics so that makes united an adjective in the past tense also the o in front of the f is particle of negation because any vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word means no. So when you're going backwards, one technique you can use is when you can credential, you've hit an adverb, you can do that. And now you just have we the people of to syntax. Because you're done with this because you know that adverbs, while they do not function while they are not breaks in the continuance of the evidence, they perform 
a similar function to breaking a continuance of the evidence. That way, that's why you can erase that and take that away, if you so choose, uh, while you're syntaxing. I mean, but if you're actually syntaxing, you wouldn't erase it. I mean, because <laughs> you're syntaxing it. If you're doing a document contract, post of vessel court venue, this is just for knowledge cultivation purposes. So now, now we know that at the end of any word group, now we're going to use this rule because I'm going to take this away like that. So we know that at the end of a word group, a word group would only end on a verb or a pronoun, right? It wouldn't end on an adverb or an adjective. Why? Because adverbs and adjectives are modifiers. And if you notice, there's nothing to modify after the word of. So it's either going to be a two or a four. Is it tangible or non-tangible? Well, we know it's non-tangible, OK? But we also know that verbs and pronouns can be either tangible or non-tangible. So now we have to look at what comes before it. And what comes before it is a tangible contract word. So that means that this of is going to be a pronoun. People is going to be an adjective. The is non-tangible is going to be an adverb. And then we is going to be a pronoun because Remember what I said when you go backwards and you can certify that you've hit that adverb? You can take that away. And now all you have is a we standing by itself, and it's a pronoun. So now let's put it all together. So we have we as a pronoun, and we know nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, which the adverb the is modifying people into an adjective, which is coloring of into a pronoun. And again, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb, which we have the adverb the, which is modifying past tense united into an adjective which is coloring states into a pronoun. So we have four, one, three, four, and then one, three, four. So there's your two syntax scenarios, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. Here's where the mistake was, people, right here. In the TikTok video, I had this labeled as a verb. There is no one, two, four scenario. There is no four, one, two scenario. There is no two, four scenario. So apologies, that was a brain fart <laughs> on my part. Uh, this is a, a stop and correct and also a syntax lesson and a reminder. I don't care what your name is, how many colons or hyphens you have in your name. You make mistakes. There is no doubt about it. It's my volition to correct my mistakes with humility when pointed out to me. And trust me, I got a whole group of people that are just waiting on the sidelines. It seems like they're salivating sometimes, waiting for me to make a mistake. And then when I do, they pounce on me. And they send me emails and send me messages in my uh, comments field. Hey, this is wrong. Why is this? You know, blah, blah, blah. Most of the times, they're incorrect, and it's not a mistake on my part, fortunately. But sometimes, it is a mistake, like here. A brain fart and a typo. Meaning, I would never consciously do that. So it just goes to show, it's always good to have somebody watching your back, looking at your stuff, just like back in the day when David had Russell and Russell had David and they would uh, check each other's documents. It's good to have someone like that with you. I don't really have anyone like that, although my students, thankfully, do function in that capacity sometimes. I basically do everything myself, so there are going to be mistakes from time to time. And if you point them out to me, I will definitely correct them. And by the way, the uh, student who pointed this out to me, their name is colon April hyphen Juanita colon Boyd hyphen Smith. So thank you very much for pointing that out and for creating the opportunity for this video. 
why don't we follow this the whole way through since this is such a small sentence and since this is adverb verb adjective pronoun bs let's see if we can translate that sentence into a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar what do you say you want to give it a shot let's try it that way i can get it on three playlists. I can get it on the syntax playlist, I can get it on the parse playlist, and now I can get it on the correct sentence structure playlist. Here we go. What is the main idea of this sentence, folks? We the people of the United States. What's being claimed here? It's not really providing an idea other than there are people and that the people are concerned with the United States. They're of something. So what is the United States? I guess we would have to say, since we are authors of this, since I'm the author of what I'm going to be writing here, I say that United States is a location. And it, the claim being made is that there are people who are of this location. So as I say, for beginners, the best way to start out a sentence is to do this. So we'll say this is a location claim. That's what we'll say. So it's a claim of the location with the, okay, so United States is no contract because it's past tense and it has a vowel in front of the consonant at the beginning of the word. So what word would you use as a synonym for United States? Hmm. Let's see, American, that is also no contract. So let's see what we can come up with here. Let's see what we can, let's do some research, huh? So first off, I'm going to look up America. Western Hemisphere, North and South America. Uh... Appalachia. So Appalachia, hmm, Amerigo is Germanic, feminine Amelia, America, all right, let, let's follow this breadcrumb here, Appalachia was proposed as a better name for United States of America, Alleghenia, What's that now? Let's follow that one. Hmm. Ohio. <laughs> okay, so this this is not really leading us anywhere. So, hmm. Let's go to a thesaurus. North America. New world. Oh my goodness. There is not much to go on here, folks. So I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go back to the document. So, the United States. So, there are states, condition of states that are united. So, another word for united. Okay, so why didn't I think of that before?
united, concerted, consolidated, homogenous, similar, no, not the same thing. Confederate United. So Confederate is a synonym for United. So this, with my own sense of humor here, I'm going to write this incorrect sentence structure for this instance only for this educational purposes, knowledge cultivation purposes only, so that we don't have to use a no contract word, past tense, vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of the word united, we're gonna use the word confederate instead, all right? Actually, you know what? <clears throat> and this will give you an idea of how to create your own constitutions and things like that. I'm going to put as the authority of this sentence by the contract parties. So the contract parties are the authority of this sentence. So I'm going to make it even more generalized. So for the claim of the location is with the Confederate States of the people I got an even better idea. There. For the claim of the location is with the confederation of these states and territories with the people of the joinder with the performance by the contract parties. For the contract parties of the performance are with the joinder of the people with these states and territories with the confederation of the location by the claim. Let's add claimants into the authority at the end here. There. To go even further with this, I would take that out and maybe say this. For the claim of the contract is with the confederation of these states and territories with the people of the joinder with the performance by the claimants and contract parties. For the claimants and contract parties of the performance are with the joinder of the people with these states and territories of the confederation with the contract by the claim.
there we go. See what I mean? You got to keep going over something and over something. I have never in my life tried to translate this sentence. And I just did it in what? Under five minutes? And you could actually even fine tune it a little bit more. But this is for those of you out there uh, who are into the, dare I say, sovereign type of stuff. This can give you some ideas on how to create your own constitutions for your own countries or corporations or whatever you're doing out there your own communities i like that word communities your own communities you can start this as your constitute part of your constitution and make sure that your claimants and contract parties all have live life claims and all autograph at the end so that they're all and they all have a part of that contract they all have a part of the authorship where they contribute to it everyone who's involved in that community would have to contribute to it and then, of course, the children would be grandfathered in until such time as they're adults and they can make a choice themselves whether they want to be a part of your community or not. And if they are part of their community, then they're open to stop and correct anything in the contract with agreement with everybody else. And then you can update it, so to speak, and put their autographs on it. That's how it's done. And correct sentence structure is correct. No assumption, presumption. Well, this was fun. This is fun. I appreciate uh, you joining me. Hope you found it valuable. And I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.